Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, uh, Sin City Preacher. Today I want to make a short video about uh, Calvinism and free will. Uh, I, I have a playlist uh, titled uh, Calvinism Debunked, and it has uh, a lot of videos on it. It's really very, very thorough, uh, and I hope you'll take the time to watch all the videos on that playlist for a more complete explanation of the problems with Calvinism. But for today, I want to make just a short video and address really one part of it, and that is the, the issue of free will, the free will of man. Uh, first, let me uh, lay a little foundation uh, because I want to use a few Bible verses just to explain the nature of God, the character of God. And so let's first establish a few things about God that we, we know from the scriptures. Uh, we know that God is love. It says in 1 John 4, 8, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. So first and foremost, we need to understand uh, uh, that the character of God, first and foremost, is love. Then let's look at Psalm 25, 8. It says that in this verse we learn that God is good. Um, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. So we know that God is love and God is good. Now we're going to define that God is forgiving. In Daniel 9.9, 9, it says, To the Lord our God belongs compassion and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him. So even though man has rebelled against God, God want, wants to forgive us. In fact, we are all forgiven because of Jesus' death on the cross for our sins. So God is love, God is good, God is forgiving. Now let's see, is God merciful? Uh, we'll look at James 5.11. We count those blessed who endured, who have heard of the endurance of Job and have seen the outcome of the Lord's dealings that the Lord is full of compassion and is merciful. So uh, we know that God is love, God is good, God is forgiving, and God is merciful. Now, is God patient? Look at Psalm 86, 5. But thou, O Lord, art a merciful and gracious, uh, slow to anger, and abundant in loving kindness and truth. So uh, he's uh, merciful, gracious, slow to anger. That means patient. Uh, and he's abundant in love, loving kindness, and truth. And then finally, and maybe most important for this video, uh, is uh, the fact that God is just. So let's look at Job 36, 6. Uh, it says... He does not let the wicked live, but gives justice to the afflicted. He gives justice. And we'll look at now 1 John 1, 9. If we admit, this is in the Amplified Version, if we admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he is faithful and just. And they have amplified it true to his own nature and promises and will forgive our sins, dismiss our lawlessness, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we know that, uh, in summary here, uh, God is love, God is good, God is forgiving, God is merciful, God is patient, uh, and God is just. And foremost for this uh, subject, God is just. He will do what is right and just. Uh, now, now, how does this relate to uh, the question of uh, Calvinism and free will and sovereignty? Uh, first of all, the, 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 ter the word sovereignty uh, can be very easily misunderstood. Uh, I am arguing that sovereignty does not mean that God exercises control over everything. No. Um, sovereignty, uh, God's sovereignty, means that God has the 
power and ability to exercise control whenever he chooses to. But he doesn't always choose to because he's given man free will. So he wants man to have free will, but whenever he wants to, he can intervene and, and exercise control, but he's not controlling everything. So there really is not a conflict between God being sovereign and man having free will. They, they can go together. Now, uh, if, um, if, if man does have free will, as, as, as I'm arguing here, then, then man can be held responsible for his actions because man is the one that chose to do it. Now, if man did not have free will, and God was exercising his sovereignty in this way that he was going to actually control every thought, word, and deed of mankind, like a puppet master. Well, if, if, if God is a puppet master and he controls every thought, word, and deed, then man cannot be held responsible. And God is the sinner, not man. Just think about that. If God made you do it, if God put every thought into your head, every word that came out, every action you did, then it's not really you do it. You're simply a puppet being controlled by God. There's a saying that guns don't kill people. People kill people. It's not the gun that's evil. It's the one that uses the gun that is uh, killing someone that is responsible, not the gun itself. Well, if God is a puppet master, then man is simply like a... Uh, a tool in the hands of God, a puppet that he's controlling. And if that is the case, then uh, man cannot be held responsible because he can't be responsible if they're not his own actions. And so uh, in that case, that would make God the sinner. Every sin that has ever been committed throughout history, God did it. If this was the case, if Calvinism was true, if man did not have a free will, if, if uh, God was actually controlling everything in that way, then God is actually the sinner. Uh, and uh, I think this would even make God uh, more evil than Satan, because God would be responsible for all sin. Well, and another thing, let's imagine the great white throne judgment. Uh, let's say that uh, you never got saved, you never put your faith in Jesus, uh, and uh, you, you're at the great white throne judgment, well, God could not charge you with any crime. God could not hold you responsible in any way. You could simply turn to God in pleading your case and saying, I didn't do anything, God. You're the one that did it. You're the one that controlled everything. You're the one that's responsible. So instead of God pointing the finger at you and holding you responsible, you can turn around and judge God and say, God, you're the guilty one, not me. Now, this is not the God of the Bible. As I showed you in the description of God, in his character, his nature, that uh, he, he is just. He's, he's not going to create people and then control them and, and commit sinful acts through people using them as tools to sin, and then finding them guilty and punishing them. So, if, if um, Calvinism and all of these uh, aspects of Calvinism were true, uh, particularly uh, unconditional election, which means that, that uh, God chooses some people to be saved uh, and, and uh, for no particular reason, it's not based upon anything, whether they decided to put their faith in Jesus or whether they, uh, they did good deeds. or there's, there's no personal merit involved. God just randomly chose, chose to save some people. And it was against their will, since they don't have a free will. Uh, then, uh, if that was the case, I've always wondered, how could a Calvinist think that, why would God choose to save 1% of the people, or 5%, or 10%. It seems to me that the logical next step is that if God uh, is going to save people and the people have no choice in the matter, then God would simply choose to save everybody, and therefore I would be forced to become a universalist. Uh, so I just made a video the other day uh, uh, saying, why not universalism? 
and I certainly am against the teaching of uh, the doctrine of universal salvation. So I'm not prepared to accept any of this uh, Calvinist uh, uh, theology, and I, I'm certainly, if I did, I'd certainly, uh, it would lead me right into universalism, and that's impossible for the reasons I made in the other video. So if you didn't see that video, go to that one next. Um, now, is this something to, to divide over? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I, I do find the whole concept of uh, uh, man having no free will and God being the, the, the author of all of this and control of all this, I find it to be repugnant. I do think it is as an attack uh, uh, on the nature and character of God. It's, it's insulting to God. And it's really, uh, it's, it, the, the God that I know from the Bible would never act in that way. So, um, let me just say that uh, if you have not put your faith in Jesus yet, uh, I'm going to ask you right now to just believe that Jesus paid for all your sins and your sins are forgiven. And now that you know that your sins are forgiven, you're free to have a relationship with God. You can choose to do it if you want or you can choose not to. If you want a relationship with God, if you want to have everlasting life in the kingdom of God, since Jesus already forgave all your sins, now he's offering you eternal life if you want it. Just go to Jesus in your mind right now. Just say, Jesus, I want to have eternal life. I believe in you. I'm counting on you. I'm depending on you. And at that moment, he will put his spirit in you and give you everlasting life. Uh, give you a spiritual resurrection. Bring your spirit to life. I hope you do it. If you do, please make a comment on this video. Bless you all and rest in the love and grace of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.